Welcome back to Bird Dogs Forever, the podcast. I am your host, Chris Hagaseth. Last week, we started our hunt in the Colorado Rockies after blue grouse. This week, we're going to complete that hunt. Be prepared for more wonderful scenery, remarkable dog work, and just incredible experience all the way around. Throughout recorded history, dogs have shared our lives and our work. For 10,000 years, dogs have been our companions. Our friends. More than mere tools, dogs have been our partners in work and play. Come join Dr. Christian Hagaset, his wife Laurel, and their Labrador retriever Jesse as they meet and hunt with a wide variety of bird hunting dogs and their masters in a place called Bird Dogs Forever. Well, we've had a lovely ride in on lovely horses and we're taking a break and we're having lunch and it's my opportunity to talk to Rex about Harley. Now Rex, I understand Harley has quite a few accomplishments. Can you tell us about some of those accomplishments? Well, probably one as far as the pointing lab thing is he is a grandmaster. He's a third generation grandmaster pointer retriever, which is with the American Pointing Labrador Association. Uh, he's also a senior hunter title dog under AKC. Uh, he won this year the 2001 National Championship with the National Hunting Dog Association against all pointing dogs and pointing retrievers and flushing dogs. So he was he was lucky, but it, yeah. it sounds <laughs> he did like a good job. he's a pretty darn good dog. He's a wonderful dog. Now, one more thing I have to ask you before I let you talk about Harley. Can you tell us a little bit about Harley's retrieving habits in the house? <laughs> He's a busy dog. He, he likes to be real busy and one of the things he'll do is he'll, uh, during the course of an evening, he'll go up in the closet and bring a shoe down and hand it to you and you put it on the couch and he'll sit there for a while and then go back and get another one and pretty soon you'll Matching have a Matching shoes? Sometimes. Well, he'll just keep bringing everything to you, whatever <laughs> he can find. So. Uh, he's, he likes to be busy. He's and so you, you and your wife have to take them all back upstairs? <laughs> yeah, I haven't taught him to do the other yet. <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit more about Harley. What do you like about the Labrador Retriever breed? Well, I had to get a replacement for my old dog and, and I uh, saw an article about the pointing labs and I didn't necessarily believe in them. But, uh, so I went out and I really researched it and I did my homework and I just decided why not? You know, I mean, if they point fine, a Labrador is a Labrador. They're a versatile water dog. They're a family dog. They're just the, you know, I've always had them. And I just decided this might be a, a change. And it, uh, and he did point and he's just, what a, what a fun thing to do. And he's a great water dog. He's a, he, you know, he likes ducks. He likes geese. He likes anything that you put in front of him. He's willing to, to please. Well, I'm really, really excited about watching Harley Hunt. <laughs> And we'll just have to go and do that very thing right now. And thank you for your time, and we love having you on the show. Well, thank you very much. I really, really am loving it. This is great. Thank you. What an opportunity. Kind of looks like Harley dinged himself. Got a, got a yeah. dandy there. Yeah, he ripped himself open pretty, pretty fair, but... Let's get that EMT gel on. Now, I'm going to show you what happened to... He'll lick it, keep him from licking it for a couple minutes, and then it... Then let's let him do what dogs do. No, no. Here you go. It's a little tender. Yeah. No. Now keep him from licking. Let me show you what happened with Jesse here. Sit here, girl. See right here? No, don't look. Look at this. This wound was about that long two weeks ago. No, no, no. And, uh, just with EMT gel, that's what we've accomplished. She's got a little fresh cut over here. I'm going to put some on too. It's sticky stuff. It, it it's real sticky, right. and uh, it's got collagen in it, and it, the body incorporates yeah. that into the healing of the wound. Now on foot, three men and three dogs work up the steep slope. Passing through 10,000 feet, the blue grouse should be up ahead. Probably. A 15 degree slope right now. 
verging on 20 real quick. It'll be 35 shortly. <laughs> I can hardly wait. This is a major piece for us for grouse. Seizing any reason to rest, we pause, and Gary shows us one of the blue grouse's favorite foods, thimbleberry. Tasty, huh? No wonder the grouse tastes so good. Oh, and the meat is fine. Yeah. Let's go find them. Okay. What a blessing to be out in the wilderness on such a glorious early fall day. Harley thinks so too. Uh huh. So we'll try to get right under the, that band of spruce trees right there. Yeah. And right up there, and then over on that ridge top. Okay. Is where we're going to find grouse. Okay. That's my bet anyway. You're the boss. You're the guy we pay the big bucks to. Right. Do I get a t shirt out of the deal? Or? Positioned in a line, the three of us sweep across the mountain. So far, our grouse hunt has really been more of a grouse walk. We've climbed a thousand feet from the horses and not seen a bird. We suspect the lack of recent rain has driven them lower on the slope. Far from tired, Harley has plenty of energy to be playful. And uh, so, that, darn it, I want that feather. I don't want you to have that. Why do you have to do that? Why don't you go find your own? We decide to split up. I go down the drainage to the left. Gary and Rex go to the right. This doubles our chances of getting into birds. Here is a predator kill from a, uh, from a hawk. And the reason you can tell it was a hawk that did it rather than uh, a uh, coyote or something like that is the breast is exposed and the, the, the hawk sat on top of this bird and ate all the meat off the breast and then ate the legs and none of the, the feathers are really scattered around. Or if a coyote would have done that, it'd just be feathers and bones everywhere, so. You know, How old is, do you think that, that bird is? Uh, Boy, that kill. Uh, let's put it this way, the beetles are working on him now. Could have been <laughs> this year's bird, could have been a mature bird, but we're in grouse country. Rex and Gary really connect, while I struggle through dense cover. A hundred feet down there is the creek, and up here, the beavers are at work. They must be doing this at night to haul the stuff down and dam this creek. They're amazing creatures. There's a bird in there, it's sitting really tight. This terrain is dangerous without a shotgun. With a shotgun, it's a lot more dangerous. The only way to carry it is empty. If we miss a bird because we got the gun empty, we still get home safely. This is one of those essential parts of hunter safety that everybody should always remember. Being safe first is always the, is always the key to a successful hunt. Harley does an admirable job, but the birds have yet to hold for one of his staunch points. Good job, good job, all right. Okay, that's enough out of this cubby. Come on, Jeff. So much for the pointing on that deal, huh, Rex? Should be right in there somewhere. Yeah, he's just falling. What he's doing right now is he's following the path of where the bird just tumbled and tumbled. Without a trained retriever, many birds would never be found. Super. 
Nice job. Uh, one thing I wanted you to understand there is we saw a lot of birds there, and in the heat of the moment, you know, sometimes a guy could go, wow, let's get another one, let's get yeah. another one. We could have shot easily three or four more birds probably out wipe of out that a covey. Whole covey. Yeah, why exactly. wipe it out? Yeah, it's one. I think that's great. I think it's, I mean, it's not the number of birds, it's the hunt. These blue grouse were just goosey enough today, and the cover so dense that we didn't see Harley point any of them. That is the way real blue grouse hunting is. You know, that old adage that you always have heard, it's, that's why they call it hunting and not getting. Today was one of these remarkable days. My friend, you got a limit. My friend, you got a limit. I did. Ask me how many birds I got. <laughs> how many, how did, many you did you get? <laughs> I didn't get a single bird. I had one quick shot of the whole day. Oh, when we that. split up up there, I went right, you, I went left, you went right, and it should have been right. Well, but who's I'll, to say? Yeah. All I can say, I appreciate hunting with you. You really have a fine operation, and this is the place for somebody who truly wants to be challenged with the ultimate up, upland bird hunting. And I can say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I and really enjoyed that. You <laughs> and your dog, they, oh, was... as advertised, I mean, you couldn't have shown the Labrador oh. off any finer. And it's it, wonderful. It was really nice hunting. Uh, it was, oh, what a treat. Yeah. What a treat. Yeah. I loved every minute of it. Okay. Thank you. You bet, Rex. <laughs> you okay, bet. guys. Well, uh, We've got about a seven mile ride back. Two hours anyway, so yeah, oh. let's get on the horses. It's for easy for us, <laughs> but those poor dogs. You are my companion, you are my friend. You are not just a dog, we're partners to the end. And when we're in the field, you're the joy of my soul as I watch wild I'm going to let you in on a secret about this that you've just seen. You didn't see all the birds harvested. I had a camera crew that didn't quite come through for me. They let their batteries die. So there was a lot more birds bagged than you saw. Sorry, it's what happens with television. Now, when you want to see the whole show, we've got it on our DVDs available on our website, birddogsforever.com. Until next week, I'm Chris Hagaseth, looking forward to meeting you again. <laughs>